So these overinflated figures that manufacturers give you, and you know, just to woo audiences, just marketing gimmicks, don't fall for that. Check out the actual contrast ratio. <clears throat> Another very important thing to consider when you're going for an LCD or a plasma is the resolution that it supports. So all of these are called HD TVs. However, the term HD or high definition is used very loosely. HD simply refers to a set of resolutions and a, re a, a monitor which supports a display, so an LCD TV or a plasma TV which supports something like say 480p which is a resolution of 720 by 480 pixels is also technically an HD TV and something which supports 720p, that's 1280 by 720 pixels is also an HD TV. So you know the term is used very loosely. What you should be shopping for is, in, is a 1080p display. A display which does not state that 1080p is supported but rather it states its native resolution as 1080p. The native resolution is the resolution at which an LCD or a plasma works optimally. So you get the best possible picture, the best possible output on your screen. So native 1080p means that this display can show you 1920 by 1080 pixels progressively scanned. That is currently the highest resolution available, which is common in the market, Blu-ray, HD uh, content, that is the resolution that you should go for. Even your consoles like your X360 and your PS3 support this resolution. In general, 26 inch displays and anything under that do not support a resolution of 1080p. This starts from the 32 inch TVs and above. Some of the older panels around, especially true in case of plasma TVs, even the larger 42 and 50 inch displays do not support 1080p. They are 720p displays. This is something that you should check. So it's very important not to check for HDTV compatible or HDTV ready. It is very important to check the native resolution which should clearly state 1080p. So if you keep these two or three things in mind, you should be able to make a very informed decision. And there's very little that manufacturers can do once you know what contrast ratio you're looking for, once you know what resolution you're looking for. Other than that, it's just a matter of choosing between brands, it's a matter of choosing you know, what looks aesthetically appealing, so on and so forth. There are also the newer LED TVs, what are being called, what are being made available. And before people say that, you know, LED TV or LED is a new kind of technology, well, it is new. <coughs> but the display is not an LED display. It is quite simply an LCD with a new kind of backlighting. Traditionally, LCD TVs or LCD displays even LCD monitors used to use something called CCFL backlighting. That is basically the backlight, which is how you get your image on the screen. So the CCFL backlight was a little thicker, was a little bulkier, which is why the TVs used to be larger, at least in terms of the thickness. The same goes for LCD monitors. So the backlighting was, the CCFL backlighting was replaced by LED backlighting, which is more economical since it consumes a lot less power and it is able to give you better intensities and therefore a higher brightness level. So LED LCD TVs are basically the latest new thing. You know, they, they are hot right now, everyone is advertising them, everyone wants to buy one. At the moment prices are very high. If you have that kind of budget that you could, there are certain select models available in the market which you can go in for. Expect to pay at least 1 lakh 10 to 1 lakh 20,000 for a 42 inch LED LCD TV. Prices should come down in the future once market acceptance picks up, which is not the case at the moment. One of the last things which is not as important, which you need to look at carefully when you go to buy a large screen display, are the connectors that you get. So most uh, of these TVs will have component connects, component video connects, HDMI connects, whatever. So HDMI connectivity is important if you plan to use it even with a PC. There are a lot of computers which have uh, a lot of graphics cards available today which have HDMI connects in case you're looking to build an HD TV. HDMI can also be used with your uh, consoles like your X360 and your PS3. One of the things which I have come across when I go shopping and I browse through HDTV stalls 
is that a lot of people tend to sell these displays with the number of HDMI ports that they have, you know. So this TV has four HDMI ports, so it's better than this one which just has two. Well, in my opinion, something that costs 10,000, 5,000 or even 8,000 more with just two extra HDMI ports as an added feature is not great at all because if you are hooking it up to a DVD player or a Blu-ray player or you are hooking it up to your PC, chances are you are not going to be using more than two sources. So I think one or two HDMI ports is all you need. Of course, one port is actually all you need if you are going to be watching it from just one source. But just to keep things flexible, I think two HDMI ports is more than sufficient. So don't be paying anything extra for a TV that has five or six HDMI ports. When chances are that all they'll be doing is catching dust. I think that's about all you need to know about going out there and picking up an HDTV.